Hello and welcome to day two of uh, Mermay, the month of everyone's favorite dreams, with Katya. It's me. Hi. Hey guys. She is, uh, yesterday drew a mermaid for us, and today she's continuing to draw a merleg, which is the weird fish top human bottom. Yeah, right? so we're drawing two mermaids. Uh, one the way you might think of a mermaid, the other reverse mermaid, which are growing in popularity. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And actually, before we start on leg merm, um, which is what I've been calling him, <laughs> uh, I was thinking about showing you guys sort of the, a sneak preview of how I do the animation. So I'm doing two animations, and on day three, which is tomorrow, I'm gonna combine them. But we can show you in Photoshop how to get started with that, in case you're really curious and dying to know. Because this oh. is all kind of work you did last night at some point to kind of get it to a point that was shareable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, uh, on, on my iPad here, I've got a sketch of a mermaid. Um, and then I actually went through, and you can see there's some more uh, layers here, and they're all very similar, but just with slight little adjustments to the hair and to the, the tail. Um, and we, when we put them all together, hopefully it's a relatively smooth um, animation. So, uh, actually before transferring it over, I just wanted to show you real quick um, how to add a few little embellishments on that might not move. So I, I'm looking at her hair and it's like a little bit, um, She's just got a lot of hair, so I was thinking about adding maybe some pearls. And I'm not drawing on any of the mermaids here uh, because I would have to redraw this pearl um, all five times. So I'm just adding, I, I know this part of her hair doesn't move, or it's not going to move. So I'm just adding a few pearls, um, maybe some scales using the Kyle T. Webster uh, fish scales brush. So I've been using the, the Blair 30, which is a great versatile brush. But I'm gonna go to the mermaid brushes. Thanks, Kyle. And I think I mentioned these last time, but the cartoony scales are ones I really like. Um, so this upper part of her uh, butt, I guess, her <laughs> tail won't really be moving. So I think that'll be a safe place to put some stuff. So maybe just a few, Oh, those are big. Um, She's made of five scales. <laughs> also, uh, for uh, everyone joining us today, we also have the similar but different challenge from yesterday, which was drawing a mermaid along with us, which today there is now a color palette to be prescribed. So in the Behance channel, if you go to the challenge section, there will be a link, but also a listing of four colors that were actually pulled from Katya's artwork. Yeah. As inspiration for uh, creating your own mermaid. A lot of the entries have been super great, so if you want to be part of that and contribute your own artwork, and you can use Illustrator, Photoshop, whatever program you feel comfortable using, and the winner of that at the end of the day, which you will be forced to select again. I love casting down judgment. <laughs> will win one of each of these prints. Rad, fill up your walls. Your walls are too boring. <laughs> There's so many of them. You need some prints. Yeah, I mean, also hanging of the print, because I certainly forget to hang things, and then I just have prints sitting around, so. Don't be like that, don't yeah, be like Logan. Definitely hang art. <laughs> um, awesome. Oh, one last thing I wanted to do is, uh, before transferring it over to Photoshop, is I think she needs a, that the string of a tea bag. So that is something I'm gonna draw really quick. Um, also, why is she sad? Well, you'll see. <laughs> okay. okay, there's a reason. She's, uh, well, she's looking at her friend here, and. Because her tea must be delicious. Uh, yeah, yeah, I mean. Or it's just ocean water. <laughs> that, that's it more likely. Um, so I, I, since I drew some frames at home, I did want to show you how I, um, uh, how I kind of plan out the different motion. Um, so I'm gonna go back to this squash flare brush, because I love it. <laughs> Kyle T. Webster, who has joined us, and now the pressure's on. Oh, He's shit. judge his oh. own brush work. <laughs> oh, shoot, hi, Kyle. <laughs> um, I met you at the Wakeham Experience Center um, in Portland. Hi again. <laughs> Thanks for the brushes. Did he look exactly like this cartoon head? He absolutely did. Eyebrows awesome. and head and all. <laughs> I assumed he had no eyebrows. <laughs> well, I was, uh, he's there to prove you wrong. All right, so 
Um, I just have her kind of bouncing up and down, so you can kind of see, I'm just gonna make another note here. Her hair kind of is up here at this highest, I think this is the highest point. Oh, the no, that's Everest the lowest of point. Hair. So this is like, right here is about as much as her hair moves. So for this tea bag, um, Hair math. <laughs> I mean, these are just notes that I'm gonna take away. So for this tea bag, the string is probably gonna come out somewhere in her cup here. Maybe just bob around up and down. Um, Which answer is Glenna Cole was asking whether or not the tea bag was gonna be floating around. <laughs> um, so I think uh, leg merms might be because leg merm does not have it together. This is falling apart. <laughs> Doing his best. Does have fish brains, so <laughs> leg merm. All right. So let's see. I think I'm gonna start down here. Just gonna have this guy bobbing around, so little S. Um, and what I do when I'm drawing is I'll sort of do this fake onion skinning. So I'll put the previous frame at 50% and the frame I'm working on at 100%. So that I can kind of see where it's been, where I'm going. Um, I can see clearly. Now the rain is gone. Because mm -hmm. um, the rain is all around you for you're in the ocean. <laughs> what a, a beautiful <laughs> image there, Logan. <laughs> um, yep, so real quick, we're just gonna... It doesn't have to move around that much. Also, earlier when I said that you would win these posters, that's for the chat. Uh, you still get Creative Cloud for the drawing. Sort of mishmash the two. So just get involved in the chat, ask questions, get lots of deep life information out of Katya. <laughs> I've got it all together, guys. And then you'll get those posters potentially. Yeah. For we will select one person to get them. Yeah, I'm, I was, had such a fun time seeing all the stuff that you drew yesterday. Super impressed. Um, I hope you draw two drawings today and even more tomorrow. Um, Every month should be something month. Yeah. Because so, someone should draw every day. I think it's a good thing to do. It is exhausting though. Yeah. So I'm just doing super slight uh, shifts here so you can kind of see it's turning into a little mess, but uh, it'll hopefully look better when it's all animated. So that's the string. We're just gonna slap a little tea bag on here. Maybe purple for- What kind of flavor tea? Grape? <laughs> that sounds gross. <laughs> uh, it's grape flavored mermaid tea. Just a little square. Another little square. So I'm being a, a little bit speedy and lazy about this. It's a kind of rough animation. If you didn't say anything, no one would have known. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I think we're dealing with some smart cookies. I'm just going through, okay, delete this guide. So at this point, do you see any of this as tedious work anymore, or is it just such tedious a habitual? Work? Nah, this is fun. Nice. Um, because when you're, the thing I really like about doing animation this way is the result is sort of a surprise when you get into Photoshop. And I mean, there's gonna be glitches and, uh, you know, kinks to work out, but then you go back here and you, like if a highlight is too strong in one of the frames and kind of pops out when it's all moving, you just go back and edit and then, thankfully with Sketch and Photoshop, the transitioning is so seamless that it really takes less than a minute. So if you do have to go and rework, it's not a pain. You don't have to re-render seven hours of footage. You know, it's, uh, it's okay. Also, the... Uh Christina threw out the option that she might be mad at Starbucks because they used her likeness. <laughs> I did not sign off on I mean, that. A mermaid suing a giant corporate brand. That's a show I'd watch. Yeah. Mermaid in America. <laughs> awesome. Okay. I think these two frames might be too similar. Erase that. Jim Mayhai asked, I tried to make a frame X frame animation yesterday, but 
ended up running out of space. Any advice in a way to avoid more space or save and never run out of space to work? Frame X frame? I'm not sure if that's frame by frame. Oh, yeah, yeah. Which is what I'm guessing it is. Oh, yeah, so I mean, th the reason I use Sketch is uh, because I do really short looping animations. But if you want to make something that's more than like 25 frames, I think that uh, increasing the number of layers might be something that's coming to Sketch. Again, I don't work directly with Adobe, but mm. I, I, have a, I have a feeling that that's something that a lot of people complain about too. Because as of right now, you'd have to like export this and then kind of bring one of those in and do it all over again or something? Yeah, so another reason why I break my animations out into different uh, drawings sometimes is because of that uh, layer limit. So I'm doing her separately uh, so that I can have different layers just for her and do as many as I want. And then if, if I was trying to do her and leg merm <laughs> in the same composition, then I'd have just that many fewer um, Fewer mm -hmm. layers for the both between the two of them, um, and probably more management. To yeah. have to like make sure they're both adjusting at the same time. Yeah, definitely. Um, so that's why I like to break it out. So I'd encourage you to, uh, um, you know, see, try and be strategic and plan how you can break apart your animation, maybe into different cutscenes. Uh, but yeah, this, this this method is really good for looping animations and uh, gifs or gifs. Or Jeffs, if you were here Welcome yesterday. Back to that. <laughs> um, please don't say Jeff. <laughs> it sounds wrong. Do you um, know any? Did you say there was one person who's like trying to bring that? Yeah, he to just doesn't fold? want people to fight anymore. Or he wants to make them fight more. Yeah, I don't think you end a dog fight by throwing another <laughs> dog in the ring. <laughs> dog fighting is bad. Don't ever. Maybe. I mean, no, it's what? bad. <laughs> It's bad throwing a dog at the, I mean, that's the <laughs> age old problem of just, we'll have more employees and try to fix this, but then it crumbles anyway. Um, all right, let's see. And this is the point that gets really fun and really hairy because I've got so many layers. Um, Teabag, number one. Also, I named these, uh, I did frames one, two, and three, and um, then I had a feeling that would be a kind of a chunky animation, so I went back and I made 1.5 and 2.5. Mm. Um, so I'll show you how, how that might be different in the smoothness. Um, Were there any sort of animations you watched that had the kind of loose, scribbly style to them that spoke to you when you were younger? Loose scribbly style. Like um, an Ed Ed and Eddie or something oh, where the I lines did, just constantly like I did moving. look some of that. Um, scribbly style, I mean I watched a lot of 2D animation like Avatar The Last Airbender and what are some other kid shows? Like like around that era? Like Dexter's Lab? Yeah, Dexter's Lab, that Powerpuff very, Girls. like mod But that's style. like very clean and vector almost. Yeah. Um, but then, like going back to Lady and the Tramp and stuff, there's oh, yeah, all the yeah, really yeah. loose pencil layers and stuff you could still see from the sketches. Okay, I think we should try to put this in Photoshop. We might have to come back and rework it, but I'm just gonna go up here and hit Desktop Apps. And I think the the only trick you need to know is that both of your devices have to be on the same network, I guess. So I'm on the same Wi-Fi on both of them. I hope. Um, and it's the same Creative Cloud account, right? Same Creative you can't Cloud have, account. Like, yeah. Between them, yeah. So hopefully, oh, this is my Not cat Marty. Uh, can we switch to the laptop view? There it is. Yeah. So it, it just said sent over here. This is Marty. And hey, look, my project is here right now. So right down here is where you're gonna hit create your frame animation. And there's actually two options, and I'll be showing you how to use both of them for the final thing. So there's video timeline and frame animation. So I'm not sure which yours might be set to by default, but we're gonna do frame animation. And if you can't find that, if it's not already up, you can just go to window and then uh, timeline. So it doesn't say animation, it says timeline, but that's what you want if you're gonna do this. So I'm gonna hit create frame animation. And now I've got a little box down here. So it's super easy, super simple. You just click on this, um, add. And the layer's all imported properly. Yep. And they're even named, the names have come through. What? 
So here I've got, I want, I had them at like 50% opacity. So I'm gonna put all of them to view and scroll this opacity to 100%. So now they're all, all there. You can kind of see all together, it's kind of a mess. So I'm going to, for this first frame, just have merm number one and just go through really easy to set frame two as layer two and so on and so forth. Um, yep, so that is all of the layers, but I am I actually did it to be a loop, so now I'm gonna come back down and um, sort of go in reverse order, and I'm gonna stop right before it gets back to the first layer, because then it jumps right back to the beginning. So you wanna have your, it might be a little too small to see down here, but it, it's set at forever because we're gonna do this forever. So now is the exciting moment where we find out how it all, how our first stab was. And look, she moves. <laughs> um, so that's just a very slight animation. It looks kind of funny because she's in place, um, but we're gonna deal with that later. Okay, I was gonna ask, is, is there magic to how that goes about? Yeah, so there's two main options. So if this was gonna be my final project product, um, I could just sort of uh, nudge each layer up and down. So hit the, the, the move tool, shift her up, and uh, then you can, can kind of see there's like a little bump. So I could make her float using the nudge tool, but I have these layers like the pearls <laughs> and the scales that are kind of on top of everything, and they assume that what's beneath them is not gonna move. So I'm gonna actually, in the, in the final product, because this we're gonna put it all together, I'm gonna be using the video timeline to animate my animation. So she's gonna be able to move up and down um, in the final thing. Are there also gonna be uh, background elements in the final one? Yeah, so we're gonna do okay. a background too. Oh, I wanna undo the Mermaid going through light nudge. speed. <laughs> um, so yeah, let's zoom in. Just make sure everything's cool. Hair's a little bumpy. I don't mind it that much. Maybe I'll fix it. Um, it's got like a charm to it. Very like folksy. Yeah. So I. Kind of style. I mean, the whole reason I hand draw these is because I like the kind of rough hewn, uh, sketchy look. And if this was so, these are zero uh, seconds of frame, which obviously you can't have zero seconds of frame. So <laughs> that's basically saying it's just going to go as fast as you possibly can. Um, so I what like if, to set them at like 0 0.1. What if you awkwardly set them all to like 10? Yeah, so, it's so just like, <laughs> like one, <laughs> one second a piece is gonna, you're gonna really see all the clunky. <laughs> Here we go, so you can play around, see it's what. the old mermaid. Yeah, so like if I had a really smooth like 10 frame animation, maybe that would work, but I think 0 0.1 seconds is gonna be pretty fun. Not giving people a seizure. Yeah. <laughs> it's just too fast. Um, so now to prepare this for uh, putting it in the comp position, I think I wanna maybe crop her in a little bit. I'm just gonna outline her and make sure there's room for her hair. And go up the most to important part. Um, image, uh, let me see first. Okay. Image crop. See if that didn't mess anything up. Didn't mess anything up. All right, now I'm going to actually get rid of this background <gasps> layer. Um, she's in the absence of life. So now she's just, <laughs> she's just uh, <laughs> floating in the void. <laughs> and so you can uh, go to um, export and render video. So that's what I'm gonna do. So now there's a couple ways that you can save this. If you want to upload if you want to save a file that can be uploaded directly to Instagram, you need an MP4. And that's for that format, you're gonna want uh, H.264, and I don't know how that got named, but <laughs> that's the one you're gonna want. I'm sure want. there's a reason. So the upside to that is that you can uh, upload it to Instagram. The downside is that you can't have a transparent background. Um, so for right now, because this is gonna be a part in a bigger, one. I'm gonna use the QuickTime format. And down here, the alpha channel, that's, 
that whenever you see that, it usually indicates transparency, I think. So I'm gonna go with straight unmatted, which is gonna preserve that uh, transparency in the back. I'm gonna say, uh, title this, normal merm one, in case I make you know future revisions. I'm gonna maybe save it to my desktop. <laughs> um, which that's nothing. Yep. Totally, I'm totally that tidy in real life. I definitely didn't dump everything in a file so that you guys can see it. all the corrupt, <laughs> dark secret files. Yep, so now we've got normalmerm.mov. And now she's floating over a black background. Is that like, and is that the screen or is that? So it'll just show up black if there's, if it's transparent. Okay. Um, so we've got some artifacts in there, just like a little bit of leftover which maybe you care about, maybe you like, maybe we'll edit it out. Um, but anyway, this plays once, uh, and you'll be able to loop it later. So anyway, I just wanted to show you guys the how we're gonna get into more of the animation. So now let's go and draw some legs on a mermaid. <laughs> yep, so back to the iPad. Awesome. I think that's like a whole flow that isn't utilized by a ton of people. So it's really nice to see it kind of broken out from point A to C or Z or wherever letter we're at in the process right yep. now. <laughs> um, well, I'm glad you think so, Logan. How's everybody doing? Sorry, I know I just launched right in. Yeah, it was a quick jump. <laughs> but also, if you're just joining us, we are now getting into the second mermaid figure that's going to be in this composition, which is the leg merm, the reverse mermaid. And also, there's about 10 minutes left to get involved in the chat. Just keep talking it up, and you'll get the chance to win these prints, all these cool Adobe prints. For your ugly bear walls. Yep, make Welcome them no pretty. longer ugly. <laughs> all right, so here's the rough sketch that I did on day one, and now we're gonna turn this into <laughs> more of a a real drawing. So maybe I will go over the lines a little bit more. Beautiful fish. Um, so my plan here is to have his little uh, flippers, these ones, uh, just waving madly. Uh, and then maybe a little bit of a little leg sway. I don't know, we'll see how it goes. Um, is the leg over the knee? Yep. And the cross legs? Yep super judgy leg kicking. <laughs> Just casual. I'm bored. <laughs> Just, you know, trying to. I wish I could hold tea with these flippers. Whatever mermaid life. <laughs> also, if you want to draw along with us. Please do. We'll be drawing all the way up until uh, 20 minutes before the end at three o'clock. So if you go into Behance and go over to the challenge tab, there will be all the details for the challenge today, which is drawing a mermaid along with us. From Mermaid, and there's a color palette to work from that's actually pulled from Katya's own work. Use my colors, <clears throat> yay! Yeah. Be inspired by the colors, be inspired by mermaids, and you can use whatever application you want. So Illustrator, Photoshop, any of the mobile ones, there's no limitation. And then there is a link right there to submit in number four, and then we'll just start seeing all these beautiful works go into the gallery. So excited, you guys. And then someone will win and get the Creative Cloud for a year. Woohoo, that's worth a lot. <laughs> I would like that. Super um, helpful. Let's see. Um, some... Spinning, zooming. Yeah, uh, I... Ooh, cartoon eye. Yeah, I uh, move my canvas out a lot, you know, just to help cater to how my hand slides. Do you move your laptop? Um, I used to, but now with, with this like pinch and zoom feature, you don't have to look like a goober anymore. Um, or, I mean, if you that's what you like. I like oftentimes forgot that you could do that in the app, so I'd end up just turning the whole device around because I'm just thinking of like old sketchbook. Yeah, and yeah, you're like, yeah. Oh, right, stupid. I mean, I mean that's kind of nice. It, it speaks to how easily you, easily you can move from paper to drawing on a Cintiq or iPad. It's true. My personal Cintiq, though, the big one I have at home, is not touch. Because oh. my palm would set it off all the time, so oh, gotcha. I specifically got the not palm one. 
but so far I've had some pretty good. Nice. Yeah, I have almost no complaints. Nice fish butt. Um, I think we just want to give this guy crazy Doing all those toes. squats. Because <laughs> what else are you going to do when you're a mermaid with it? <laughs> just dance at the party, squat. Just crazy toes. I'm doing crazy toes. Um, on that tea diet. <laughs> um, <laughs> so that's... Let's just jump right in with color, because why not? Yeah. Very, very simple. Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us. Where's everyone coming from today? I know we sort of jumped off immediately into the animation portion, but we're so glad to have you here. And if there's questions and any sort of question you want, whether it's what interests you have, what Katya's interests are, what kind of process, thoughts on art, what you had for breakfast. breakfast that too. Is Favorite foods. <laughs> Italy, South Africa, the Huge. Adobe Cafeteria. <laughs> hey guys. Sarah was just here. <laughs> she didn't make it that far, got trapped. I mean, they've got some good food in there. Yeah, there is food. It's mm. exactly what I'm desiring. If I make this fish dark purple, is that too in contrast to the pink? I think it is. I think I'll make. This fish. Is it gonna be like a weird horror goblin fish? Like you make it really dark and like drooly. Oh no. There's <laughs> drool coming out of them. But it's like. That would be kind of funny actually. Oh shoot. Uh, yeah, all right. We're Russia, gonna... Nashville, Ireland. What? I've always wanted, that's been on top of my list for so long to visit. Where, Ireland, Nashville, uh, Russia? Yeah, yes. All? <laughs> you say Russia? I've been to Russia, hey! I mean, my name's Katya, so you could probably guess. Um, no. <laughs> <laughs> it's impossible. Uh, so I am just filling this guy in. I tend to do shapes first um, and then just refine the edges, add some texture. All my work is, I guess most of my work is, is pretty flat and cartoony just because when you're drawing a ton of frames, you don't want to. Uh, do something super, co I mean, maybe you do, but you don't want to do something super complex that you have to redraw over and over again. Especially for animation, you said? Yeah, and uh, the more elements you have that you have to redraw, the higher the chances are that one of them is just going to be wrong and they have to go back in. So for, for um, if I'm doing a static image, I'll put as much detail and color and everything as I want, but for animation, um, you have to keep in mind that the end format is go probably going to be a GIF on the internet, which is gonna be a really compressed file in order to load quickly. And so probably not super big if you're getting really detailed. Yeah, so that detail might not come through and it might just be compressed out. So all of your nice texture might go away. So don't get too attached. Um, and and <laughs> I love sort of GIF culture. I mean, at first they were used just, I guess, you know, they're often used to show funny moments of TV shows that we like, little reaction gifs, but then a ton of people have just taken it to a whole new extreme as um, an art form. Um, I mean, it's very fitting too that gif is one letter away from gift, which is often shared at parties. Cause you're, you must have been so good at connect the dots as a kid. Oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> but also oh they're very gosh. like shareable being that small and very culturally is, relevant, which yeah. makes it like, a very fun, good connective point for everyone. Granted, it does seem like magic to my parents how gifts get made, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, to be honest, I was super skeptical when they were first getting, like, really popular, I think back in 2013, maybe? What's this hullabaloo? It's like, just just show a, a picture, or just, like, watch a video. Why, why do you need this nonsense? It's not even showing the whole video. Um, but I've since, you know, totally fallen in love with them. Um, do you not become like the cranky go back to stop stop making movements? What? My moving pictures just scary. Oh, <laughs> I just thought they were useless, and yeah. I mean now I've totally changed my mind. And now they're a form of communication. Um, what are your feelings on memes? On memes? Ooh, very mixed. <laughs> uh, my my dear younger brother, uh, he shows me some that I can't interpret, um, and he he just shows them to me, cracking up. Hi Ansel, if you're watching, um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I don't get them. But then there are some that you know, 
I understand the humor of. So, What's the ones that have like stood out to you? Uh, of memes of pictures on the internet? I don't know, there's like weird series ones where like the Spider-Man 60s ones work really well for me usually. <laughs> I mean, anything with a cat looking existentially concerned. Um. <laughs> yeah, we're at uh, 1.30 right now. Which if you wanna hop into the chat and start hyping up all the chat talk, this is your chance to become a possible winner of these prints. And isn't that something you want to be today? A winner? A winner. Granted, you can always be a winner in your heart. <laughs> when I You're was... just going to be a winner of physical goods today as well. When I was five, my mom asked me what I wanted to be when I grew up. Winner. And I said a winner. <laughs> She's like, that's my daughter. And then other times I said a character. Like I wanted like, to be a cartoon character. That's not my daughter. Character. <laughs> Get out of here. Um, Do you feel like you've succeeded in your mom's dreams? I, in my mom's dreams? Um, I hope so, mom. If Are you watching me, mom? <laughs> <laughs> um, she did send me some really cute uh, screenshots yesterday that she took. Um, when we were the main thing in the screen, it looked like you had a party hat because of the background. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Super cool. Uh, totally planned. And um, then we're going to play that sweet video Ooh, is it time? It is about that time. Play the video. Yeah, so. Sweet black screen. Duh, duh, drum roll. <laughs> <laughs> Wow, the suspense is killing me. I know, right? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> is that your final answer? Is that it? Is this the answer? Nice. The winner today is Anel Henning. Yay, Anel! You get these sweet posters. It is with the hope that you frame them and love them forever. We don't want to abuse sad posters left alone in dusty under the bed situations. Oh my gosh. Is where a lot of my posters ended up. Congratulations. Thank you for participating in the chat and sharing your words and thoughts and feelings with us yeah. today. Please continue to do so. Give me all that support. We hope you're here for the friendship and not just the prints, although they are pretty sweet. But so are the friends. It's true. And if the posters are your friends, I guess that's okay too. Well. Oh, first time <laughs> winner. Congrats. Hey. Uh, were you wearing glasses yesterday? I don't think so, right? Is somebody asking? You no. Know? <laughs> no, there was like a nice glasses comment, but neither of us were wearing glasses. Now we're both wearing glasses. Oh. <laughs> so. Uh, yeah, it was probably you. Um, no, I was not wearing glasses yesterday. I am today. I was. Took I just, you know, couldn't actually see anything yeah. that I was drawing. I realized I, was... I couldn't read the chat very well. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> so. <laughs> I'm like this part, fine. Everything that way, not so fine. Okay. Um, excellent. Well, we're pulling it together real good. Um, our fish, what color are our fish lips? Whatever you want. Shoot, I Depends try what makeup is this fish wearing. Man, I try not to look at fish that much. Like Have they, you tried putting lipstick on a fish? I, you know, in first grade, one of our crafts was painting a fish and then using the fish to make t-shirt prints. Wait, like a real fish? Yeah. Just like our teacher got us fish from like the local deli and told us, oh, orange. Thanks, Kaylee. Oh, hey, Kaylee. Um, uh, yeah, told us to uh, paint a fish and put it on a shirt. And then I wore that shirt as a weird fishy smelling first grader. What? I want to know more about this I went to a kind situation. of a weird okay. school. <laughs> I think I turned out okay. It's too bad you didn't like catch the fish and then just paint it. So your neighbor who's also fishing is like, what is happening right now? I want all of the fish in my pond to be beautiful. Largemouth bass gets purple lips during mating season. Oh, okay. Well. So is this a mating tea ritual? I am going to say probably not. <laughs> it's like a weird Tinder but date. But that is a really fun fact. Thanks for sharing. <laughs> um, I'm a big fan of fun facts. Um, is it true getting catfished if it was a date? <laughs> <laughs> um, 
speaking of fun facts, my mm -hmm. favorite one that I've learned, did you guys know that the official bird of Madison, Wisconsin is the plastic flamingo? That is That's strangely the... not Florida, which is what right? I would assume it to be. <laughs> um, and also there are more plastic flamingos in the United States than there are real flamingos, which mm. probably isn't that surprising until you learn the other fun fact that there is, I think, one species of flamingo that is actually native to North America. I don't know where, because I haven't seen them. that it's been taken over by all the others. <laughs> it's like, I was here first. Yep. Um, Dewey threw out a good Fender date. Ah, uh, hey, so we're back to that today. <laughs> <clears throat> also, Kevin says, fish don't know that they are wet all the time. And if they did, that's a whole existential crisis for that fish. <sighs> well, I'm glad I'm not a fish. <laughs> yeah, I know. At least in a literal <clears throat> sense. In an existential sense, maybe we all are. A little it's bit. True. I mean, originally we were. So. <laughs> long, long, long ago. Long. Thank goodness. Um, hopefully never this fish, though. No. Wouldn't that be so horrible Only if this is how evolution worked? <laughs> <laughs> like, we're just going to go toes up. <laughs> just running into trees. Oh, my gosh. At least you'd be able to run. Be yeah, but you're also just constantly having a hard time living outside of the water you just ran out of. <laughs> oh man. Yeah. There's a little bit of a, there are some spots that were a little bit um, transparent, so I just duplicated it to get rid of those. Do you like getting some of those in the final animation to give like texture or? Um, sometimes, in, in like if the background color works, it's kind of nice to have mm -hmm. a little bit of that peek through in some places, but not like right in the middle of his fish guts, <laughs> where there should be fish guts underneath. Gotta conceal all those fish guts. <laughs> also, if you want to draw along, we've still got a little over an hour for the challenge. So if you go into the challenge tab on the Behance channel, you'll be able to see today's challenge being a mermaid again, along with what we're doing but also the color palette of these four colors that you'll be able to choose from, pulled from Katya's previous works. Yeah, it's another animation. Yeah. Um, it's a guy sitting on a tooth. Because, you know. Because why not? You can see the example of it there as well. <laughs> I think teeth are super interesting, but my friends don't like it when I talk about teeth. They think it's weird. <laughs> I mean, what specifically are you talking about with teeth? <laughs> That's, uh, mm -hmm. I just think they're <laughs> cool. And I've got a dentist who likes to explain everything. Awesome. Which I'm really And then you're into. trying to carry that information back to your friends so that they're more knowledgeable. They're just not into it. All right, all right. <laughs> it's fine. I can respect that. I've got other stuff to talk about, like flamingos and... Uh... And their teeth. <laughs> Do flamingos have teeth? <laughs> no. Are you sure? I didn't think so. You could draw one with teeth. <laughs> oh, that's but actually a cool idea. a plastic cool flamingo idea. could absolutely have teeth if they want to sculpt that. <laughs> and horrify all the others. I mean, I have been bitten by by Canadian geese, which are well, they they got teeth. They've got like little teeny, really angry but useless teeth. But they're just angry all the time. Yeah, they which is really weird because they're Canadian. <laughs> but um, they did leave Canada. Maybe they're not Canadian, and people just call them it's that just to Americans reduce who the. Hate Canadians. <laughs> uh, maybe they're just trying to get people to feel better about them. Um, the park near my old house actually hired dogs to chase the Canadian geese. Awesome. Did they pay <laughs> the dogs in food or money? Uh, I think in geese gizzards. <laughs> Goose gizzards. I don't know. <laughs> um, let's see. So I'm just adding a little bit of texture here and there. Um, I'm using the paint inside feature, which is amazing. Um, you can just draw a shape and then hash just out everything Scribble all over it. the place and be fine. Yep. Caesar, you have a question? What's your question, what Caesar? What is your question? Hello. <laughs> Tell us. Tell us right now, Caesar. <laughs> don't leave us. Too bad we don't have like hand raising capabilities through this. <laughs> Fish lips. Let's see if there's any work that came through the challenge yet. Ooh, are you guys that speedy? I'm not. I don't know, maybe. <laughs> nope. Not yet. That's all right. Fish lips, fish lips. So I'm, I am putting a little bit more texture into this main fish guy because with the with a other mermaid, um, I 
had her moving in a kind of more significant way. I had her, all of her hair changing and her, the bottom of her tail changing. For this guy, he's gonna be a lot more static. So I'm actually just gonna have one base layer and then I think the fins will be layers on top. Like these? Yeah, little <laughs> T-Rex fins. That didn't make sense. You guys got what I meant. <laughs> um, Kevin asks, can you make the fish taste good on the illustration? Of course. What do you, do you think I'm a trash person? Of course I'm gonna make this fish taste good. But then when it's like next to a mermaid, it makes the whole idea of eating the fish way more disturbing. Yeah, well. Granted. I don't wanna disappoint Kevin. <laughs> Have you, have you been to the Pirates of the Caribbean ride in Disney in a while? Uh, like, has it been updated really recently? I don't know, or if it was just like me not remembering, but there's a point near the end when there's just like a skeleton of a mermaid oh. up on a beach, and I'm like, that's really cool. Someone had to sculpt a full-sized, legit mermaid skeleton. Yeah, I don't remember that. Same for the Harry Potter one at Universal. I haven't been there's there. There's a mermaid skeleton. Oh, are People you? are really into mermaid skeletons. In, okay. Maybe it was a big like, screw you Disney or something. <laughs> or maybe Disney killed Ariel, I don't know. Oh my gosh, you mean Universal? So many places. Well, Disney had the skeleton too. Weird. So I don't know if she accidentally ended up in the pirate park. So uh, mermaids aren't immortal is what we've learned today. Yeah, I mean, I never thought they were. No? But uh, I think in the Harry Potter world, it's near Diagon Alley, which is my favorite part of the Harry Potter world because it's all dark, spooky, and it has cobblestones. Nice. And you can buy weird skull toys and stuff. <laughs> like the fake shrunken heads and whatever. It's true. Nice. So here's our, I, I really have a passion for wall-eyed animals. You know, just the ones that can look at Stone two people at once. Stone I have no idea what's going on. <laughs> yep. I had a cat who <laughs> was real dumb and had that, I, that look. I totally drew so a cat. So precious. I totally drew Sarah and I's cat. Tyga, which her eyes totally do that in my illustration where it's like, Ugh, and then her tongue's sticking out a little bit. Uh, so every time I look at her, that is exactly how I imagine I'm her to be sure. processing things. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that cats and dogs like that are just really beneficial to your health. Yeah, they love unconditionally in a way that they don't even understand. They're and they can love both of you because they're watching. Yeah. <laughs> also <laughs> true. So Caesar, said, I studied illustration of the human body. Now it is difficult for me to do another type of drawing technique. How can I change my drawing style? Do I have a book or do you recommend me a book? Ooh, uh, so illustration of the human body? I think that's what they're good at. And so like how to kind of get out of that genre of drawing potentially. I mean, if you can draw the human body, I think that's one of the hardest things to draw because it's so dynamic and it is a three dimensional um, object. Uh, so you can try and to uh, apply the same sort of light logic and understanding to other things. So, I mean, usually people learn how to draw, um, I don't know, like spheres and uh, cylinders. The when they're just like, wrong, 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 so <laughs> cups. Right, but like you learn how to draw those very basic three-dimensional shapes, mm -hmm. and then they're like, oh look, a hand that looks like a um, a wedge with cylinders coming off of it. So maybe for you, you can say, well, that tree looks like an arm. I don't know <laughs> how. <laughs> that tree's made of human parts. Um, yeah, I... That's basically H.R. Geiger. Okay. <laughs> um, I, I can't think of a, a book um, off the top of my head. I mean, if I, I, can you tell us what kind of style you're looking to get yeah. into? We kind of, I think there's a lot of books or things out there that would be helpful depending on what kind of style you want to try. Like mm -hmm. I remember one of the ones that a lot of my friends had, as well as myself, was the like Marvel How to Draw Superheroes book where it basically exaggerated human form oh, to uh -huh. make it more stylized for superheroes. Um, so that would be diverting slightly from the path of regular human anatomy. However, just watching cartoons and kind of looking at art books of like Pixar movies or Disney movies is really good for taking that form and like breaking it down to shapes and various styles. Mm -hmm. I do really love uh, Pixar uh, concept art books. Cause also like the shapes, you start getting into the theory behind like human forms where in like Up, he's very boxy and then the kid is like very oval shaped for a reason. Mm -hmm. So it's like the more playful, the more like stagnant. And there's a lot of like, very particular design reasons behind all that thinking. Um, which I mean, 
the human body has evolved a certain way. So there's reasons behind that too. But also Kevin Schneider says, I'm curious, now that one fish has legs, finally, what shoes will he or she buy after the stream? <laughs> Man, again with the <laughs> shoes, you guys? Uh, um, Uggs. He's gonna buy Uggs. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. <laughs> Just um, gets flippers and was like, I wish I had fish. Oh, or Crocs. I mean, Crocs would be really the practical choice. Yeah, Crocs. They were used for boating originally, right? I don't know. I, I yeah. haven't paid much attention to Crocs. <clears throat> like the Crocs with the holes were originally made for seafaring fellows who like the water could go into the shoe and just bleed out immediately. Ooh, but then you get the croc tan and you just look like your feet are it's, sickly. <laughs> instead of having like the sweet tattoos from a sailor, you just have like weird spots on your feet and they're like, Oof. oh yeah. My sweet croc tan. Yep. You have croc tan all over your body. Did you get a croc suit? Oh. Well ventilated, but croc not worth armor. it. Our armor was sponsored by croc. <laughs> Uh, texture up on his butt. Mm -hmm. So he's a really big brush size and a very low flow to get sort of just a little bit of grainy texture um, going in here. <laughs> First, I thought you said granny texture. Granny texture. Like, don't know exactly what that means. You know but... how grannies are <laughs> is like this. <laughs> um, I usually go back and forth a little bit with a light layer or light light color, maybe a more saturated, darker color. Um, Kevin follows it up by saying, then he or she will go to Hollywood to become the big fish in the ocean of stars. <laughs> it's true. It's just on it today. <laughs> He's gonna have to do a lot of, uh, what's that stage performance with the kicking again? The showgirl like. Oh yeah, um, chorus line type. Yeah. Just having that, but like trying to loop your arms around so people with these weird <laughs> fins. Oh man, I should have drawn that. A Dude. bunch of leg merms in a in a showgirl line. The Rockettes? Fishettes? Yeah, yeah. The Fishettes? Somebody, somebody think of a better pun, please. <laughs> the Croquettes? Croquettes, there we go. Man. Kevin also asks, what have you never drawn before? Never drawn? Um, Look at that butt texture. Butt texture. <laughs> oh, I definitely have drawn butt, butt texture. Um, let's see. I mean, I'm not really into robotics, I guess. Um, so I know there's a big uh, trend of like steampunk stuff, and I find mechanical stuff really hard. So like, I, I can draw um, like tubes and stuff if it's more organic, like a, mm -hmm. just a big mess. But if it's really clean and sleek. I tend to stay away from it. Um, Is it just like not as fun to kind of work on? Well, yeah, I mean, I have a big history of graphic design, so that's where I sort of have to be more clean and sleek mm -hmm. more often than not. So when I'm illustrating, I really like to kind of put unnecessary shapes and colors and textures in because clients don't like that on their uh, small business branding projects. They like sure. what's necessary. <laughs> well, if we thought about this, leg fish thing as a uh, coffee shop logo or something. <laughs> the anti-Starbucks? <laughs> yep. Um, I mean, it's it's still a pretty bold graphic shape. For, for logos, you do yeah. want like a nice defined silhouette. If it was on a hat, I'd wear it. <laughs> Thanks, dude. It would be for like a really weird cheap beer from Milwaukee or something. <laughs> it's like um, Red Bull gives you wings. This one gives you this fish head. This one gives head. you <laughs> legs? Fish head? I don't know. <laughs> this uh, one gives you scales. We'll workshop it. <laughs> we'll put it through some uh, user testing. <laughs> Man, Kevin, just asking all the questions. How do you find ideas? What's your process? Um, I think it's really important to get outside because most of my brain waves come when I'm somewhere in nature, not looking at a screen, um, and just, you know, sort of letting my mind wander. Uh, and I think a lot of people have found that when their brain sort of has time to unwind and not really think about something super pressing and that's right at hand, the, that tends to be when they're most creative. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, so uh, I do spend a lot of time on online looking at other artists, other work. 
and I have a huge inspiration folder saved just to my Google Drive. And it's not all work that I'd like to emulate, but it'll each, I, I save things for a ton of reasons, whether it's, oh, I really liked that hat this character is wearing, or I really liked the way that they did the background on this one, or the way that they used this certain brush. So it could just be anything. Mm -hmm. And if I'm really stumped, I'll either go for a walk or pull up that folder and just kind of mindlessly browse through it until something clicks in the back of my brain. I mean, I feel like there's definitely a reason that Walden and the whole Walden pond thing oh, is yeah. <laughs> so still spoken about of just the wanderlust of having to go outside and reconnect with nature. Yep. There's also those really awesome videos of Disney background artists just painting in nature mm -hmm. and then going back to the studio and just like stylizing the trees and definitely. it's really sweet. Yeah, Pixar sends all of their employees like to wherever. They do a lot of Yosemite and Tahoe. Kind Yosemite, of. like, uh, you, did you guys see that really cute short about the the dog? It's called Feast. They just brought in puppies. <laughs> you know, uh. make this even cuter. <laughs> um. Glenna asks, "Do you have any animated movies that really inspired you?" Ooh, definitely. Um. Akira. That's been on my to watch list for oh, so really? long. Yeah, I mean, it's confusing. <laughs> okay. The book slightly less confusing. Oh, there's a book. I didn't know yeah, that. it's six volume comic, and they're all like this thick, so it's nice. Wow. It's a lot. Shoot, that's really the three big. volumes in the middle just don't happen in the movie. Oh. <laughs> so they just kind of like skip a whole lot of stuff. Um, let's go a little shine right here. His butt. Does that look like a shine, guys? I think it looks like a shine. Yeah. <laughs> um, and this one's definitely more pacey because he doesn't like to <laughs> go out. Um, so uh, yeah, Studio Ghibli is I think just fan did already phenomenal. Say Spirited away. Oh, Spirited Away so, like, is top notch. Howl's Moving Castle, um, great s plot lines, just amazing art. The the background paintings in those mm -hmm. are just to die for. That's um, a goal to strive for for me um, someday. Ooh, Do you also draw on paper or only digitally? Oh yeah, I started off drawing just in sketchbooks, and I fill them up with all these horrible, horrible all these doodles. Fish butts. Oh, fish butts. <laughs> um, yeah, I have a sketchbook with me pretty much at all times, and. Uh, um, yeah, I think it's it's a really great thing to do, just to warm up, to jot down ideas. Um, I haven't had a lined notebook in so long because my notebooks are all to-do lists mixed in very fluidly with um, with really horrible doodles. And I'm a very visual, <laughs> like I think visually and through lists. So when I die and people go through all my notebooks, nobody's gonna get any benefit like out of it. Because it's so, because <laughs> it's so mixed up in there. Um, because I think I'll, it just adds so much personality though. Like a lot of the old books from like sailors and stuff too had drawings, even though they were artists but they were like, mm, can't describe this. Just gonna draw it. Yeah, yeah. Um, so there's a little gap right here behind the leg, so um, I'm just gonna fill it in. So it doesn't look like a mascot uniform top? Yeah. Our, our sports mascot was half funded. <laughs> oh, that'd be so sad. Sheely Rowe asks, have you ever had it where you watch a movie or something and get ideas that way? Oh yeah, definitely. Um, there are some films that are just super artistic and um, uh, sometimes I don't even finish them. I just get up and I have to go sketch. Um, what have those been? Man, I think... Have you been in a movie theater and just left because no. you had to go sketch? <laughs> no, uh, man, I don't go to movie theaters that much. Um, Wes Anderson is a big inspiration for me. His compositions for the way he, he does his shots are so interesting and he, his colors are so consistent. Um, Which one's your favorite? Grand Budapest Hotel, I think. I mean, yeah. Moonrise Kingdom is pretty hard to beat, but I really love the uh, the sets, especially mm -hmm. in Grand Budapest Hotel. Um, I'm a big Royal Tenenbaum fan. Oh, that's a good one. Oh, except for, oh, I can't, no. I don't want to share any spoilers. Um, <laughs> uh, in case anybody hasn't seen it. And there's a surprising number of you guys, I mean, people in general, who haven't seen Wes Anderson. And in real life? <laughs> at the coffee shop? Yep, at the coffee shop. Just go wander Texas. Is that where he's from? I think so. Okay. Um, let's see, I'm gonna, something that's good to do, especially 
because this is going to be on a different background, is to just uh, fill in the background with black, so you can kind of see if you're missing any gaps. So like his. See how smooth that butt. But here, yeah, there's like a little bit too much texture Some on there. Some people seem a little disturbed by the no pants. Other ones definitely are right with the no pants. Hey, have you seen normal mermaids? Have you ever seen butt? <laughs> <laughs> um. Uh. Uh, he, sh she'll, he, they, they will have uh, some anklets. Will that make you guys happy? <laughs> Rocky. <I> mean, <laughs> how do you think that this guy or fish person would put those pants on? This hmm? guy or Gil? <laughs> <laughs> Rocky Rourke asks, do you usually work in raster or do you do vector as well? Yeah, so uh, I, whenever I do, um, I mean, I do both, but I, really enjoy this sort of painterly blending that you can do with raster, but I do infographics as well, and um, that's definitely uh, always vector. Mm -hmm. um, Unless you really want to piss off a client. <laughs> Here's your raster infographic. Yeah, you have to print it at a two by six inches. <laughs> Good luck finding an office max. Um, yeah, so uh, I, I like to work in both. I usually do Illustration as raster and anything design as vector. Yeah, that's kind of how the breakdown of my work has become. Unless it's like text based, I'll do like the illustration raster and then bring it into Illustrator to do typography or something. Mm -hmm. Just because it's rendered better and it can adjust better. Do you guys know what we've been missing? Do you know <laughs> who caught it? Tiny party hat. Oh no. How's it staying on the head? There's going to be a strap. Or the neck. It'll be strapped in. Or the in. bag. <laughs> Climeric Designs asks, are you guys excited for the 2018 MacBook and iPad Pro announcements next week at WWDC? Now I am. <laughs> <laughs> News. Ooh. Um, yeah, I, I'm a big fan of apples. Um, just in life. Just in life. Apples are good. <laughs> Keep doctors away. Um, don't like those doctors. Uh, yeah, no, I, I was really actually skeptical of the iPad Pro um, and Apple Pencil at first. Uh, I thought that nothing would be able to beat the Cintiq as, as far as, you know, the experience of drawing. And But there's almost no lag on this thing, which is really important to me. Mm -hmm. You don't want to be have your pencil over here and have the line trailing behind. Um, and uh, yeah, no, it's a really smooth drawing experience, so I'm Really looking forward to seeing <laughs> how it gets better and better. Yeah, I, <clears throat> I'm i always like excited-ish about new tech, but at this point it's like evolving so often. It's more just for updates, it's like, all right, what do I have to like get to know now? Or what am I <laughs> gonna have to familiarize myself too. with? Man, yeah. <laughs> when I'm back not... in the day it was like, oh, new thing. But yeah, they're so spaced out, but I've never really been the sort of person who updates my device every time it comes mm -hmm. out. Um, Shelly Rowe also asks, I came late to the party, but did anybody ask what got you started into artwork? Into artwork, just in general? Yeah, I think just in general. Ooh, um, man. Popsicles with gumball eyes. Huh? Or no, ice cream. Did you ever have those ice creams oh, with gumball yeah. eyes? Oh, yeah. Oh, those are always so man, disappointing. this is so creative, but also lopsided and melty. Um, I mean... I grew up in the Bay Area. My grandma would take me to these amazing art museums, and I think uh, it took me a while to kind of learn to appreciate them. Like, I, I got to go to, to Moscow, and they've got some real good art there, and I just didn't have the, like, I've got pictures of me looking so bored in front of beautiful Van Gogh <laughs> and Monet awesome. paintings. <laughs> um, thankfully, I've gotten to go back and visit as, as an adult. Granted, you can still dislike Van Gogh. <laughs> no, you can't. What are you talking? Get out of here. <laughs> Um, and you're gonna have your opinions, just make sure they're right and they line up with mine. Um, exactly. <laughs> um, uh, did somebody ask if Tomerm had teeth? I think I saw that somewhere. Really? Yeah. Uh, Maybe. Let's, let's try it out. Up a little bit. Huh? Searching, searching. <laughs> Maybe he should have teeth, if not. Yeah, Just like buck some tooth. buck teeth. <laughs> oh gosh, I kind of liked the drool idea. Oh man. <laughs> just some like snaggle teeth. Yeah, just make him as like whack as possible. Um, 
Kevin asks, what's your dream client and why would you like to work with them? Dream client, like a specific one? I mean, mm -hmm. I my favorite thing to do ever is event branding because uh, they're often clients who just want to grab somebody's attention. And <laughs> what do you guys think about the teeth? I think it might be too much. Yeah, I, I think we'd both love to hear what you think of the of the teeth, whether to go with teeth or drool. Teeth or Let's drool? Do, that. do you want to try both? Yeah, try the drool. Oh gosh, I don't want to make this. If they can't, if you can't compromise for the pants. I'm not going to compromise for right, the exactly. pants. Right, exactly. We no. provide drool or buck teeth. Oh gosh. Eh. Yeah, he's definitely not getting arms. There's no <laughs> arms in this equation. He'll get flippers. Unless don't you worry. got like Trogtor beefy arm. <laughs> Just, <laughs> you know what I really love is. Um, uh, is so birds, many birds biceps. with arms? Yeah, birds with arms. Um, is, you should get that website domain. Birds with arms? Birds with arms? Is that not already I don't know. Thing? I can't look right now. I'm working. <laughs> but it should be. It should be. Um, like, unless you guys really want the teeth, then I'll, I'll bring them back, but... Um. It can also be a last minute addition if suddenly yep. we're like... This requires. I'm also big into having eyes on the same side of a head. Not that, <laughs> not that he should. Just, but. just have one kind of like sticking up over here. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. And then you don't know if he has two eyes, three eyes, however many eyes are on that back side. Like the really cartoony, like floating eyebrows. No, not, <laughs> not into it. Um, so. I'm the dream client. Oh, dream Give client. Give all the eyes. Oh yeah, but <laughs> dream client. Um. Dream client, yeah, somebody who, it's nice to have a little bit of direction, but not like a helicopter hover client. I've had some of those. Um, so somebody, like the ideal client is somebody who finds your work online, is like, I like what you do, make me something, because I've got faith in, in you and your style that I've seen. Um, and whose would yours be? Who's your dream client? My dream client? Um, I mean, honestly, like doing a, a music festival would be super fun. Just kind of sort of look at the flavor of the bands that are playing and get to design. Um, and which, which, which festival? I don't know. I can't get that specific. I haven't been to that many. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, I would make my own festival. It would be an alternative. Uh, shoot, what are genres? I mean, you could make a. This would be great for like a weird bluegrass. It would be poster. only Beatles cover bands, and it would take place in, uh, shoot, uh, the uh, Death Valley. It would take place in Death Valley, and there would be lots of farm animals to pet. Okay, okay. This and, is very. <laughs> no, this is going nowhere. It's going everywhere. Um, it's not going to be called the Abbey Road and just be like <laughs> really ripped dudes playing Beatles I mean, covers. I'm not against that. <laughs> um, all right, so I'm going to draw some flippers now. And I just want him to kind of be freaking out a little bit. So what am I? <laughs> Where am I? Well, he's going to be he's going to be like flipping his slippers towards <laughs> his floating teacup. <laughs> um, so disappointing. We have about 40 minutes left, or 30 to 40 minutes, for people to contribute their artwork to our challenge today. So if you're on the Behance stream, there's a challenge tab over to the far right, and you can see an example of Katya's previous work and the color palette that we're pulling for it. But whatever kind of mermaid you want to draw today, using whatever program you want to use, and then submit down below at the little link that's available, Woobox. And from there, we'll have a whole gallery to pick from and whoever we select later on, or you select rather, will get a year long subscription of Creative Cloud. Nice. Whew, that's the most stressful part of this whole thing is picking. I know. Um. It's like the hard part <laughs> of being a teacher. Ooh, another thing I, I, I really <laughs> admire, but I don't think I could ever do. Um, unless you guys are learning from me right now, in that case. Have you tried it before? Being, a, being an art teacher? Yeah. I mean, or a teacher of anything, I guess. Teacher of anything. I mean, I've just in a very casual setting. Oh, are those submissions that are coming Not in? Not yet. Wait. Yes, we have these top four. Nice. It starts. That's definitely the 
colors. And that's an hour in. So Shoot, we got guys. some time. Awesome. See a lot more. All right. So now I'm doing the same sort of onion skinning where I'm turning this one to 50% and then the one I'm working on to 100%. So I think we're going to have the flippers going up and down at the same <laughs> time instead of um, alternating. Also, someone said, uh, Google searching bards with arms is priceless. Right? So yeah. So that's exactly what we're doing after the stream. Awesome. Oh, another thing. Do yourself a favor. Um, Google Bob Ross without the perm. <laughs> Wait, what? Yeah, that's, did you did you know that uh, he had that hair just? For style, for the no, show? No, no, not for style, for um, economy. It was cheaper oh. to have a perm. And uh, here's a, a lesson about the importance of personal branding. I mean, that hair got so iconic and was on all of his products, he could never change his hair. That's true. Because otherwise he wouldn't be Bob Ross just anymore. Just like Guy Fieri. That was his brand. <laughs> Guy Fieri, always gonna have frosted tips. So while it is important to do a lot of, a period of sort of exploration in uh, what you're interested in, it's also important to know that um, you shouldn't build a brand around your hairstyle because you could hate it later. <laughs> um. Yeah, there's a there's definitely something to be said to allow yourself. I mean, I think it works great for them, but if I had to stick with my same haircut all the time, mm -mm. very limiting. Nope. Um, definitely not. I mean, nowadays we've got hair dye and salons are just so much fun. You know, I've actually never dyed my hair, uh, anything, which- But the option's there. <laughs> the option's <laughs> there and I like it. <laughs> um, but let's see. So, so for the other mermaid, I was doing like very subtle little shifts, but I want this guy to have the illusion of going really fast. So I'm making the jumps a little bit bigger. Um, and what he lacks in arms makes up for speed. <laughs> oh, <laughs> not compensation quite enough, but. Um, so let me double check. I think I want to double check the number of frames I had in the other mermaid because um, I want them to, you know, line up. So here, let's see. One, two, three, four, five. So I had five, so I'm going to do the same number for the flippers. Um, oh, this poor guy. Oh uh, yeah, I'm loving him more and more. <laughs> the more bizarre he becomes. Um. I think if I should go up more or down. Crap, turn this into 50%. Laurel asks, would you consider Bob Ross an artistic and or spiritual inspiration? <laughs> I mean, I always, Ma want my trees to be happy a little. <laughs> true. Um, so I guess the short answer is yes, Laurel. Yes. <laughs> There's something very like meditative about the whole thing. Oh yeah. It's relaxing. It is relaxing. And that is not really realistic when you have clients and deadlines and stuff to do. Um, it would like be amazing to try to get a company together where you work like Bob Ross for client work. There's the scrum system that a lot of Silicon Valley uses. <laughs> we need the uh, the Bob Ross system. So I think right now the flippers are a little bit, um, they're a little bit stiff. I have a feeling that once we put it in Photoshop, it might just look like triangles going up and down, which is not really what you want. So I'm gonna add some, some curving here because um, as you flap, like at, on the downswing, his flippers will probably curve up. On like a tour, like if they're just corn chips. Yeah, which could be funny. I mean, there's so many different directions you can go with Even this. Even sadder. Even sadder. So I'm gonna maybe try and add a little bit more um, dynamic of a shape to this. And also, um, there's a lot of nuance you can add into to animation because if you watched old cartoons like Scooby Doo, um, and you pause it at the just whenever, during an action scene, the characters often look super, super warped. Like the, sometimes mm -hmm. you'll see like six eyes drawn in the same frame if somebody's turning their head. And even though that one frame looks super crazy, it, when everything's all together and going 30 frames a second, um, which is the typical frame rate, um, it actually totally works. So I think uh, after I kind of get the basic shapes down for this, I might add some mm -hmm. swishy marks I know that's kind of like a similar but different way of tackling it where I know for like 
Cowboy Bebop and Samurai Champloo and stuff, they would do a lot of like, if you slow down the sword fight actions or something, yeah. there's just a lot of like blurred lines, yeah, but they captured like, like the motion swords. of it. Mm -hmm. So then when it's in fluid action, you're like, oh wow, this feels just like a swing. Yeah. Otherwise it would be pretty stiff. I think I'm gonna, um, nope, I don't wanna transform that. I'm gonna add one more onto the bottom. How many at? One, two, three, four, five, perfect. Um, As Voodoo says, there is 20 minutes left until the challenge deadline, so we should start seeing stuff come through. And again, if you're just joining us, if you go to the Behance channel and go over to the challenge tab to the right, you'll be able to see more details about all the specifics, including color palette and the ability to work in whatever kind of application you'd like to utilize. But as long as you're drawing a mermaid, we'd love to see what you have to contribute, and the winner will get a Creative Cloud subscription for the year. That's awesome. And then she'll be put into the stress of having to choose. <laughs> Who wins? This is what my sacrifice is for you. <laughs> I know. Um, That's when all the beads of sweat show. <laughs> panicking. Well, I wore a blazer to hide the sweat stains today, <laughs> so I'm good. Um, bring it on. Oh, pearl anklet. That's classy, right? So classy. So classy. <laughs> um, if not pants. <laughs> Where anklet distracts the other eyes. I mean, when guys go swimming, they often wear just speedos, so you don't know if there's a speedo somewhere in there. <laughs> um, yeah, that's what I choose. They to also say. wear anklets. Yeah, especially if they're charms? on house arrest. <laughs> <laughs> um, this is a manly anklet. Uh, let's not equate manhood <laughs> no. with being on house arrest. <laughs> That seems problematic to me. Because, <laughs> um, I mean, personally, I've been on house arrest lots of times. That's, uh, no, that's not true. <laughs> <laughs> um, yep. Yeah, no, I've never been arrested, in, in case anybody's wondering now. Has this fish? Because I'm really good at driving really fast and shaking off cops. I really exactly. need to stop joking about my... Oh, I mean, there's record. definitely the law watching this. And there's all those wanted posters when we came into the studio, too. <laughs> That's why you're wearing the glasses. Uh, yeah, I'm incognito, guys. Just pulling an old Superman situation. Yep. Yep. Does this fish have a name? Uh, 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 some people have been calling him Tomerm. Term? To, 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 Tomerm? <laughs> um, Ruby the Walking <laughs> Fish is. A Very good name. dignified. Yeah, uh, I think maybe something a little less dignified. Um, might. If it was like Rube. Rube. <laughs> like Rube Goldberg. Yeah. Um, you know, let's see. Uh, maybe some scales. That might be. Yeah, I noticed there was a mention of the scales not being there from someone a while back. Yeah, let's get those in there. That's kind of a nice last embellishment that I to put on. Really brings the fish all together. <laughs> Sparking McShiny Bottom. Heck yes, I like it. <laughs> That's what his friends call him. Yep. Uh, um, I think this might be oh, too big, way too big. Mm, too small. Just right. Because the adjustment size just makes the like half circle curves different. Yeah, but I mean, with pen pressure, you can really right, get right, right, right. a different opacity and... Oh, that good old pen pressure. Yeah, which is really nice on the Apple Pencil. If it's really good. Anybody's wondering. Maybe I'll outline these guys down here to make them kind of match. It's also really funny, something you don't get from paper drawing is just, if someone else is wearing a headset and then you're just there in the same room and you hear like clacking, of the plastic pen hitting the surface oh, yeah. the whole time. <laughs> Especially if you're filling in an area, it's just like squeak, 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 squeak. Yep. Or if you're doing like leaves or like grass texture or something. And you're like crinkle, crinkle, crinkle. <laughs> She's just making weird noises too. Do you do that ever? Just like talk just to yourself crinkle. while drawing? Uh, I talk to my cat. I mean, usually I listen to podcasts where somebody's yeah. talking to me. Um. <laughs> yeah, story time, great. Let's see. Yeah, uh, 
Any more? Any more what? We got a few Submissions? more. Hey, yeah. nice guys. <laughs> that area is sweet. Nice. Yeah, we got six. Ooh, I just want to look at these, but I, I should draw. Yeah, um, get back to work. <laughs> okay, that's what I'm here for. Uh, let's see, up. And... I think that might not be super smooth, but let's try it. I'm gonna just pull this guy into Photoshop real quick. Um, because, you know, it is super easy to just kind of detest and... Mm -hmm. um, it's like your own see. personal user test. Yeah. Darren asks, what tablet is that? This iPad Pro. It's the biggest one. I forget how many inches. Maybe 13. 13 or something? Yeah, I think 13. It's the same size as my uh, MacBook Pro. There's right. also a question regarding what podcast you like, which I know you mentioned a little bit yesterday. Oh. But oh, look, just floating. Yep, so here are the base fragment. layers. <laughs> oh, I forgot to name these layers, but it's okay. I can eyeball it. All right, so number one. Now we get to see the process of not naming your layers. <laughs> I mean, if you've got just like five of them, it's okay. But it's a good habit to get into, I think. I've definitely um, spent longer than I'd like to admit trying to look through sketch layer. I and mean, these aren't even labeled like number one, number two, number three. They're all just sketch layer. <laughs> so with Photoshop, like you can have, um, the auto select tool. So if you just click on um, any layer, then it'll pull it up. So like it'll, it'll select it right here behind Logan's head. Um, but if you've got something like uh, an adjustment or like even 1% opacity over that, then you're screwed for finding anything beneath it. Mm -hmm. um, unless you find that layer and turn it off and then go digging. They start getting a lot of like translucencies and multiplies and stuff, and you're like, yeah. oh, no. All right. Darren yeah. followed up with, what's a good beginner tablet for someone who wants to get into motion graphics? Or or would you both use a tablet? Thought? A tablet? Um, for... Is that... But good beginner tablet? I mean, I, I just used um, the Wacom, Wacom Bamboo Fun which is a pretty cheap tablet. It's not the one that you can draw on, but you, you look at the screen and you draw, it's one of those. Um, but it's mm -hmm. really nice to get a good feel for the pen and it, it trains your hand-eye coordination, which is important for art and mm -hmm. playing video games. And getting used to what <laughs> like plastic on plastic kind of feels like, Yeah. in a way. So there is the little wavy arm. <laughs> um, man, so you know desperate. what? Maybe I think I think I might actually like it if it was separate. Yeah, I think I think I'll I'll will erase the back one and make it so he's flipping. So I mean <laughs> I, I kind of achieved like what I wanted to do here, um, but he, it doesn't look as frantic as I'd like. And you know there's some things that come through with motion. So this isn't as, as sort of frantic and pathetic as I think it could be. Which with is all what the I'm blur going for. motions. Yeah. Yeah. So now I'm just gonna come back to my iPad and. Sort of test complete. Yeah, I mean, and this whole process is just you know it's fun for me. There's also a question from Kevin: How long does it take for you to finish one project? Ooh, that really depends. I mean, if it's a simple loop like this, um, like this one has two characters, and I think I'll do another floating element, um, like a teacup that's floating. So. Uh, I'm guessing six hours plus a little bit of touch up off camera. So maybe eight hours. But again, I'm being very, like I'm mm -hmm. talking and so maybe six hours if I'm really booking it. How long um, would like a 18 by 24 poster typically take since you're talking about like your favorite potential client? Oh, sure. Well, I mean, posters and like design especially goes through a ton of different revisions. Mm -hmm. um, so it really depends on the client, but for personal work, if I'm my own client, um, sometimes I'll just do a little animation in the evening to wind down or to warm up. So I did a, on my Instagram, I have like a little comet shooting through space. And it's a very simple three frame animation. Um, that took me maybe an hour mm -hmm. just to draw the three frames, put it in Photoshop, animate the hat and the little comet trail. Um, and yeah. then it just follows you into your dreams. 
Yep, super easy. All right, let's try something a little bit more frantic. So I'm gonna start with this guy having his flipper down on this side. Also, Kathleen and Voodoo Val seem to uh, want the toes to wiggle. The toes to wiggle? All right, I think we can make <laughs> that happen. <laughs> Just so antsy about that tea. Oh my gosh. I mean, I do love a good Earl Grey. That you're gonna say toe wiggle. Toe, yeah, all right, I, I love like a good that toe too. wiggle. <laughs> so I think this might take some trial and error for me just trying to do this here uh, in front of all of you guys watching me. No pressure. All but the pressure. I think I want to try and make it look like it's going faster. <laughs> Sorry, I'm looking at things people have submitted to us. Yeah? I love it. I know, right? Oh, man. These are so good. It's pretty good. I think I'm gonna make the flippers a little bit like looser. What about an eye wink? I feel like the sound an of him blinking wink. would be like. <laughs> oh yeah, it totally <laughs> would be. <laughs> um, so as well Kamarmik as... Designs asks, what are the brushes you use to draw in Adobe Illustrator Draw? Um, I don't really use Draw that much. Um, I mean, I've done a few sort of logos that I want to have more of a hand-drawn feel because you can, you know, with a vector, of course, you can blow it up to any size and it's nice to have sort of hand-drawn. So I usually just use the normal hard edge um, brush with a good, <laughs> with a good deal of um, flow change so I can get the, the thin and the thick lines. Um, <laughs> but I don't have the names of them in my head, I'm sorry. <laughs> But here I'm using gouache brushes. And they're, it's called Blair. The Blair brush. Thanks, Kyle. Yeah, made it just for you. Awesome. Um, let's see, I'm just gonna have him going up and down. Yeah, thank you for the submission, Daniel. Take care. This is the last one. We now have nine submissions. Rad, guys. Very excited to take a look at those in about eight more minutes for people to submit. If you want to win a chance to get the Creative Cloud for a year, just go into the Behance channel. And to the right of the viewer is the Challenge tab, and you can draw a mermaid with us. Granted, if you're starting just now, it's going to be a very quick drawing. I mean. But if it's a really cool idea. Do you like, like cool gestures? Yeah. yeah. Work or if you deadline. have a mermaid to draw from as inspiration. <laughs> if you like are a, a mermaid, life, just take a, a selfie. It's even faster. Um, and the only thing is to work with the palette that we've supplied, which is from Katya's previous work, yeah, which you can actually, also see there. That's an animation. I don't think it's animated in the it's example, not. but it's just a little guy sitting on a tooth and bouncing up and down. You can see that on my behind. With a plant. With a plant. I love plants. And a party hat. And a party hat. I love party hats. <laughs> <laughs> it's like you put yourself in your artwork. Oh, yeah. It's really great to be super personal with your art because then if people don't like it, then it hurts your feelings and you feel alive because you feel something. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> you Maybe know? Get very angry I think I just eat. summed up the uh, artist's identity. So uh, for all of you budding young but artists. But then if they break you eventually and you feel nothing anymore because you're like, I'm just doing it for them. And then you go back to art school. <laughs> yeah, and try to find yourself again. Um, yeah, no, it's a, it's, I'm, I'm joking, being an artist is the best thing, I think. Um, Ren says, wow, what a good mer booty. Right? Thank you. Can't cover this up. <laughs> is this like breaking any rules or anything? Uh. Okay. <laughs> I mean, you take figure I mean, studies classes there's been plenty every of, art like, school. There's goofy cartoon butts on like children's networks. All right, yeah, I, yeah, that's, that's right. Um, Stand up for the butt. <laughs> Ooh, I'm trying to keep track of like which ones are going which directions and talk to all of you guys. You talk to them for a bit. Okay. <laughs> I'll let you figure out the fins. <laughs> well, I figure out the fins. <laughs> it's so weird when I see the like squinting eye emoji kind of thing with the X and D. I just think of the Adobe program now. Oh. <laughs> it's tough. It's ruined. That was my, uh, oh, hey. Person on LinkedIn. Oh no. Um, 
What's anyone's favorite thing. mythical creature? Oh yeah. Kind of talking about mermaids. If there was gonna be other creatures that would be like a month. Oh yeah, to do draw. another month pun. Yeah. What's another month that would be a good subject to draw from? I almost expected voices to like talk back. <laughs> I know, right? You're just talking into the void. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Nick says, would I be out of line if I said, your artwork looks like it's about to fart? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> um. <laughs> Cyclops, Elf, Griffin, Cthulhu. Cthulhu would be a really good like Halloweenish time oh, period. Yeah, but uh, try and make a pun out of that. <laughs> dragons, dragons, centaur, me says Kathleen. <laughs> if Kathleen can come up with Which a proper pun sense. for her name to do the month, I think that's allowed. Yeah, and hopefully you have enough if selfies you just as draw reference yourself photos. And you're like, oh look, it's some, it's September. It's Logan month again. <laughs> self portrait it up. Me, me, Timber. I mean, that could be kind of fun. Like, self-portraits, I've always thought, are super hard because, you know, self-perception. You look different in the mirror than you actually do to other people. So, like, me, Timber, me, Yeah, I don't know. It's got to be one of those, like, <laughs> yeah, August isn't going to work for that. I guess. <laughs> I guess. Me, lie. Me, me, lie? Me, lie's kind of... Me, Timber. Almost there. Yeah, me, Timber is what I was thinking. <laughs> Man, centaurs are kind of a pain to draw, but they're fun. Yeah, I mean, for all the people who love horses, that would be... Leprechaun? Oh! Man, leprechauns are creepy. I and think that maybe so. Maybe it's just the show, or it's just the fact that... The show? Or no, the movie? Leprechaun? That weird horror movie? I uh, stay away from horror movies. Yeah, well, <laughs> now we know more about you. <laughs> Trolltober? Deception. Deception? What would that be? I don't know. Deceiving you into thinking you're drawing? <laughs> Draw lies. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five. Ooh. Yeah, Patrick, we can use white, I believe. White or black should be fine. Do you want to permit them to allow white and black? Sure, I mean. Along with these? Am I the rule maker? <laughs> I mean right now I think that are. makes sense, yeah, black and Your white. Your tooth's works. got some whitish looking to it. Uh, oh, it's not yeah. white white, but. Yeah, cream. Bone white. I mean, I'm not gonna like disqualify anybody. <laughs> <laughs> black, get out of here. But, I mean. There's a leprechaun museum in Dublin. Hmm. Very intrigued and horrified. Shiver Me Timbers is pretty good. Oh, yeah. Trolltober, that works. Yeah. That Laurel Anderson's so smart. Just missed the table with my elbow. <laughs> um, I'm sorry. Uh, February, like beer. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's a Just thing. Just do in, a beer crawl That's for definitely the a thing month. in Portland. Yeah, <laughs> of course it is. What's the weirdest like shop or thing in Portland you've experienced so The far. weirdest? That's a, oh, that's a big There's question. A of, There's a lot of stuff. There's some, uh, I met somebody whose friend started a weird little, um, it's like a peculiarium type deal where they just have gory kind of creepy stuff and you pay to get in and it's like a museum type setup. Mm -hmm. But it's really because they wanted a place to go and smoke that oh. didn't have regulations on it. But you can also, go in and pay. I haven't been there, but that sounds pretty weird to me. Um, there are a bunch of restaurants that are pretty weird. I think there's a bar that uh, is all creepy clown themed. Again, I have not been there. <laughs> that would cause me to, I mean, I don't know. I would, I don't like clowns, but I do like horror. Okay. So well. it'd be sort of inspiring. Unless it's all like friendly, them shooting for friendly, or is it like intentionally creepy? Um. Again, I haven't been there, but okay. probably just Portland people doing doing their small business deal. It's true. Is there like a good break for small businesses there? I don't know. I mean, maybe, because uh, there's so many of them. I think I said like 
most of the employment in Portland is because of it. All right, so I'm. I'm <laughs> Shelly just said, if I got scared by a clown, I'd probably punch it. And then I just imagined just hearing the word clown, you punch the air out of fear. <laughs> no. Um, so, okay, I tried a super duper frantic version. Like, this probably doesn't even make sense. Um, but none of this logically. has made sense so far. Yeah, I mean, I am drawing a fish with a button, so it's pretty <laughs> nice games. Um, so I'm going to put all these to 100%. Maybe that's grandma texture. What is? Gams. Gams? Gam gam? <laughs> <laughs> uh, sure. All right, so I'm transferring this over again. I'm just going to close this project number one. Oh. Don't save it. I'll make a new one. Oh, there she goes. It's loading. It's loading. It takes like... Apparently the Leprechaun Museum is a uh, storytelling and mythology museum. So That's cool. So not creepy. Is anybody here from LA? Because the Museum of Jurassic Technology um, is some place that you have to visit. If is you're... it like Jurassic Park? No, it is oh. not at all like what it sounds like. Darn. <laughs> um, it is the weirdest museum ever and you have to go and I can't tell you anything else. Ooh, that's so wacky. <laughs> What happened? No, that's just how it's supposed to be. Oh, uh, okay. Um. <laughs> Any more submission? Yeah, there are. A lot randomly came in. By okay, randomly, so that's a little bit more frantic. So there's a little bit of uh, smoothing out of the shapes that I'm gonna I'm gonna do because there's one that I think that looks like it shrinks way too much. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I think this one. So like, even if I get a <laughs> sucked it back into his chest. <laughs> even if I get like a really rough brush and just use my pen tool to just see what it would Finger look like, painted. it was a little bit bigger. <laughs> like this is clearly just not going to be the final thing, but even that helps a little bit. <laughs> so I think the back one I'm okay with. The front one I'm going to do a little bit more work on. Maybe I'll switch to the toes soon. Is it time to judge these yet? Uh, not yet. Not yet? Okay. Yeah, you've got some time. Have they got time? Mm, or not, is, not is, so is, much. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you can all sit in joyous expectation. Um, yeah, do you guys have any more questions while I wrap this up? Yeah. Is it fun trying to see me struggle and focus on all this stuff? <laughs> Multitasking. Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm going to switch back to the iPad now. Uh, yeah, are there any more questions, conversation starters? What kind of stuff do you want to know near the end while she finishes drawing up some of these fin animations? Yep. Let's see, you guys wanted the toes, right? Mm -hmm. Toe wiggle? Mm -hmm. We can make that happen. So actually what I might do in that case, because I'll probably keep most of the leg, for just a toe wiggle, I don't need to erase and redraw all of the legs. They kind of look like they've got some animation started on them because they have the outline too. They don't, but Oh, like, yeah, yeah, I see yeah, you yeah. So I think I might just erase the toes and just redraw. Well, we went from toe wiggle to no toe. <laughs> um, he already lost his arms, now he's losing his toes. So, okay, so now I'm gonna, I am gonna start naming these. So let's do toe one. <laughs> <laughs> um, did I draw this thing with five toes before? I don't think it really uh, matters. They just have to be crazy. I think, well, the left or the right leg has toes that are five, <laughs> but they kind of look like Charlie Brown, like the weird hands they got. Um, so something I do a lot, I mean, I, I know a lot of artists will like make faces when they're drawing an expression. So when I'm animating, I usually try to do the thing myself, but I'm not gonna take my shoes well, off. You could be doing it right now and you wouldn't know. <laughs> but I mean, I have to like look at it. So <laughs> if I was in my own, home studio, um, I would definitely watch my toes wiggling for a little bit and just go off of that. So I mean, that's one of the Glenn Keane things he talks about, too. It's yeah. The thing that's up is like when being the beast, he would say his jaw was really sore all the time because uh -huh. he'd be making beast Big. facial expressions and stuff. <laughs> that's funny. Yeah. Um. There's a... Clemeric... Clamarmic. I'm so bad at saying the name. How would you say it? Clamarmic. 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 Designs. Yeah. What's the sticker you have on your laptop? I can't even see it. I think that's you. Is it me? I don't have any stickers. Oh, 
It's an Adobe Live sticker. Adobe Live sticker. Surprise, this isn't my laptop. <laughs> That's what I'm just utilizing for right now. But yeah, there's- It's a good sticker though. Yeah, there's all these Adobe Live stickers we have laying around. Should I just take one? Yeah, if, probably. if I take one, mm, probably. people will know because I'm on camera. <laughs> and then they're gonna hunt you down for it. Yep. Um, shoot, did I? In some animations, what's the most frames you've ever used? Oh, I mean, I've done some kind of longer animations. Like I've done really sketchy little rough draw, uh, animations of like a cat playing with a laser pointer. And those can get into like, I got, I've probably gotten into the hundreds. Um, and the cat holding the laser pointer? <laughs> no, that's, that'll be the sequel. <laughs> um, the teacher becomes the taught. Where did I put these toes, guys? I don't know. <laughs> Shoot. Shouldn't name the layers. Should I thought I did. <laughs> um, so I see there's toes there. Where'd they go? Where'd <laughs> they is, toe? This is a, a game that I definitely uh, play sometimes is find the I tiny object. I forget in object. Sketch, can you choose it on the screen where you just drew it and find which layer I don't think so. Oh, okay, here it is. Okay. Because <laughs> that whole thing in Photoshop when you're like control the auto click. Select. Yeah. yeah, I don't think, uh, I don't think we have that. Mm. Mm. Good to have in the future. <laughs> All right. James asks, how do you keep the quality of the image when you export? I just tried again, but the quality of the image got a little bit of a blur. A little bit of a blur. Um, well, it depends on what you're exporting it as. Uh, there's different settings for uh, saving it for the web. So if, you, if you're going to, if the final thing is going to the web and you want to just save it as a GIF, um, you can save it as a web optimized GIF in Photoshop. Um, and you can play with the settings. Oftentimes, textures won't come across super well. Um, when I upload to, to Behance, I'll usually do as high res as possible uh, of a GIF um, because you can d display them pretty big there. Uh, if you've got a really condensed color palette, then maybe look at trying to reduce the number of colors that you're saving your file as. So like if I was doing something that only had three main colors, instead of 256 colors, I could save it down to maybe 50 and then I'd get some more um, maybe fidelity along the edges. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, my answer to you is unfortunately sometimes you just got to play with it. If you're saving it as a um, dot .mov or uh, h, uh, what's it, what's the one that I said earlier? <laughs> I'm already forgetting. Oh yeah, like h. MP4. Oh, um, that's not the, one. the other weird one that's like No, but that, that's how you save it yeah, as yeah. the mp4. Cool. Yeah. Um, yeah, so if you're saving it as that, Oof. I've certainly had issues with making GIFs when exporting it for the web where it'll, I think it's small enough too, like the size wise for sharing on a lot of platforms are so small. Yeah, unfortunately. That ends up just not working. But uh, that's that's a good reason to strat be strat strategic with your color usage. And actually, uh, sorry for leading you astray a little bit, but like brushes that have this textured edge. Mm -hmm. um, if you're really looking for something to be super small in its final presentation, might not be the best option. Especially if it's vector. Yeah. When you start getting textures and vectors and it's just like super chugging the system. Yeah. Nick was asking about AstroPad. Said, why don't you use AstroPad? Oh, yeah. In um, Photoshop. Or maybe you do and you're just not doing it right now. Yeah, so Photoshop has a ton of tools. It has a ton more tools. And um, not all of them are useful to me because you can do so many things with Photoshop. Uh, but so what I really like about Sketch is that it really boils it down. So there are a few things that I miss, like the lasso tool and the paint bucket. So like that's not represented in Sketch, but it all, also not represented are a ton of these other cluttery like art history brush tool. Um, I don't really need um, the smudge tool. Uh, I don't really need the magic eraser or anything like that. So I really like having a sort of the limited um, work flow. It's, it's more optimized for my specific purpose is the short answer. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, yeah, there's certain ones that I definitely miss from the full Photoshop, but I do only use like five of the things on the left. 
generally. So yeah, and there's workarounds for pretty much anything. Like mm -hmm. you can either just color something in or uh, erase a little bit more. So yep. <laughs> I got a stray palm line. And yeah, in uh, 20 minutes, stick around for three o'clock in which Daichi is gonna be continuing to illustrate here with Kathleen. Oh my gosh, I saw him do the speedy drawing last night. It was incredible. Um, yeah, super cool. I would stick around and creep in the background if I could, but I don't think he'd appreciate that. <laughs> but if you're like back here, <laughs> Yeah. Just wearing green, hiding. <laughs> in the green I could screen. wear green, just the little Your eye head goggles. floating around. <laughs> How do you feel about that? <laughs> <laughs> um, now, this whole experience has been super interesting because I usually don't like it when people look over my shoulder when I draw, and yet here we are and here you are. <laughs> that is totally fine. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. to do. So I'm just drawing a bunch of toes. What's the time looking like here, Logan? It is 2.41, so you got mm, just a few minutes before, if you want to take your time to look at all these art pieces. Yeah, I do. And if you had not finished your art piece in time for this session, you can still submit for next session and get a chance to win the Creative Cloud as well. Nice. We, however, will not be judging. Nope. So, but the community will get to see it. All your digital friends. All right, so let's. Because everyone. Oops, I don't want to export this to my image. Um, do, 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 do. Um, so are we there looking at submissions now? Or? Oh, yeah, if you want to. Yeah, let me pull it up. Refresh, make sure everything's here. <laughs> cool, that's the ending. Oh, awesome. So we'll start. Here with Christine. Wow. I can see it bigger over here. Yeah. Nice. I'll just navigate over here for so you. So wispy. It's so fun seeing those colors applied so differently to so many different things. Yeah, how someone's gonna handle your palette uh -huh. differently is pretty cool. Two. Esther. Nice. Way cleaner. Wow, those eyes are popping. I know, right? Wish I could do makeup like that. Third, Margarita. Nice. Oh, this one reminds me of like a fairy mermaid. She's got a pal. It's kind of like the, is it L.F. Freud? L. They did all the fairies way back when that like created the labyrinth style and stuff. Oh, I think I know what you're talking about. Yeah, there's like an art book and stuff of him, but. Nice. It's like the. It's kind of got that going for yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. And it's, I see some Kyle T. Webster brushes in the background there. Next, Windy Iris. What a fun pattern. Nice. Oh, I see. There's there's the outline of the uh, mermaid mm -hmm. within like the Nautilus shell. Ooh, the cool. the tiniest mermaid. It's like the Tinkerbell mermaids. Yeah. Oh, and there's oh, that's cool. It's silhouette inside of all the different things. Creative. Tima. Nice. Is this like an old ship? It's like a sea cave with. Oh, I love how uh, bold you you went with all the patterns. I really like how the color is applied to this. Nice. Yeah. The texture is really nice too. Ryan? <laughs> what? <laughs> the fish. The tarot card take on it. Oh, it's, oh, I see, it's a tarot card. That's funny. <laughs> I love the creepy bones going on down there. And following the suit of having fish head and human legs. Yep, mm-hmm. Aw, it's so darling. <laughs> With um, the wispy hair. Yep, great Shannon. Marta, the mermaid yoga. I really like the scales applied to the the type there. Nice. Now I've uh, gotten a few of type. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and that's like a nice <sighs> hand-drawn yoga too. I bet this person's pretty good at uh, hand lettering. <laughs> uh, I love the little uh, um, uh, water drop it, droplets. Oh, from the sweater. Yeah, whatever? from the sweater, you know, just because mermaids it's come constantly. out of the ocean. Yeah. I love it. Danielle. Ooh. Uh, that's cool. Looks like she's wearing a Oops. skull mask or something. Nice texture. Really cool figure eight pose. Pretty sweet. The hair's real nice. Mm -hmm. Hazel. Ooh. Or Hazel. 
kind of abstract, definitely flowy. Mm -hmm. You can see the, the, the shape in there. Ah, oh, it keeps doing it. Huh. I can't do the taps. Ah, uh, well. It's my weakness. Oh, Patrick? I love the puffy jacket. This looks like it might have been even inspired a little bit by Kerbin's. Yeah, because from the last round, too, there was a similar piece, but done mm -hmm. still with like the human form from a photo. Nice. And I love how the tail kind of comes out in a, this, the outline yeah. just a little bit outside. Nice composition. Kimberly? Nice. That's a similar that post turtle. to the last one. Awesome. <laughs> Aww. She knows what's up. She's like, yeah, all you fishes are wish you had arms like me. <laughs> she looks like she works out. Steve? <laughs> Plastic flamingos. The Cthulhu. I love it. <laughs> wow, there's so much going on there. I love that the eyes are the same color as the flamingo. Ah. Seth? Ooh. Uh, got some merman going on. Does he have a shell eye patch? That's kind of neat. I think so, yeah. I love the It's the only beard. way they know how to medically take care of themselves. <laughs> Just put a shell on it. Yep. Oh, man. Jonathan's. Nice. Looks like you went from a reference photo. Nice big uh, Kentucky Derby hat going on. Very Joe. fashionable. Ooh. Got some depth kind of. Yeah, the in. anchors make it moody. Are those like and a mermaid with short hair, horns nice. or something coming out of the chest? Or is that part of the uniform? I'd say it's a cool collar. Nice. Yeah, I like the mermaid clothing. Monica. Ooh. Nice. I love the um, halftone texture that's thrown in there. Oh, that's so active. Yeah. My eye keeps going around and around. That's that's a fun composition. <laughs> Faisal? Nice. Fishing fish. Oh, is that fish crying? He looks I unhappy. Know, I mean, bit. I'd be unhappy. I, mean, I don't like it. <laughs> I think also the fisher has uh, some beats going on. Yep, he, he looks happy. Oh, he's a, uh, a mermaid merman. fishing. Or man, sorry, sorry. I mean, <laughs> and Kevin. Okay. There might be one after Do this. Do I know too. who this is? Is this a celebrity? Know, I'm sorry if I if I don't know who this is. I know, if someone um, knows. <laughs> oh, I see, he put it's a- kind of like a James Franco type. He put some like shadows of mermaids in the background. Maybe it's So this guy's soul. just at a party, I guess, and- Mermaid party. He's just <laughs> enjoying. <laughs> Being, Being in the shadow Just like the fish of these have beautiful no mermaids. <laughs> um, this has some nice energy to it. Nice. Yeah, I like the uh, division of the like the top and the bottom pink background. Um, I like the uh, pose that she's in. It has a lot of movement in it without being um, super true to, I guess, literal anatomy, but you can definitely see all the muscles mm -hmm, and a good understanding mm -hmm. of the form. There we go. There's a pretty placeholder. Oh, shoot. There's all the things. Whew. Okay. Um, Want to start at the bottom and like slowly scroll up again? Yeah, I do. All right. Did you refresh to make sure that's all of them? Uh, yeah. Oh, right, because we found yeah, the yeah, end. Yeah, yeah. Okay, good. Um, we found the reboot glowy <laughs> ball thing. That's it. All right. Hmm. All right, can you go up? Mm-hmm. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> it's like a rainbow of color. <sighs> there, there's such a good variety presented. Um, Strangely, everyone drew mermaids. <laughs> that was part of it, right? Yeah. You're making a joke. Yeah, yeah. You're being, I'm sorry, yeah, I'm yeah. stepping on that. Okay, <laughs> can I narrow it down and then pick from that? Yeah. So I am a huge fan of, I really like the pop art one. With like the half tone mm -hmm, right mm -hmm. there in the middle. Very yeah. Screen printerly. I, I love that for its bold graphicness and then maybe go down. Uh-huh. Um the one with the yellow background in the middle there. Actually this those one? two. So yeah, the mermaid yoga. Um mermaid yoga. These two? Yeah, the puffy jacket and the one right below, the forty two Pacific this one? Yeah, I really like that one as well. So maybe ooh, good job. <laughs> um so these are the four finalists, I all think, doing extra great. Yeah, shoot, okay. Uh, I think 
the mermaid yoga is just so creative. Mermaid yoga? So I think that that's the winner. Yeah? Yeah, I think it's super cute. I love the, the use of the scales um, on the type. And it's just a nice graphic poster with that includes a lot of fun illustration. You have some great textures going on in the background. I love it. Good job, Marta. Also, congratulations. I was saying all awesome, and then I said also. <laughs> so, congratulations, Marta. Great job, Marta. I love it. I hope you sell a print of that. Um, it, if this was like a... Isn't that like a trendy thing that would catch on print? super fast oh, in yeah, LA? Oh yeah, absolutely. Maybe it's already a real thing. Or if you thing. had a weird album where it was like music to do your mermaid yoga to, it's yeah. the perfect square dimension to do yeah, yeah, some yeah. CD or vinyl. Oh yeah, like on Spotify, like yeah. mermaid yoga vibes. <laughs> what would mermaids listen to if they were doing yoga? Does music play well underwater? No. There are lots of questions <laughs> that we might not have answers for. Um, it super doesn't. Yeah. All right. Well, great job, all you guys. Maybe it's just whale noises. Whale noises. That's. Uh, it could be soothing. Um, all right. We have a few more minutes. Just if there's a few any more last minutes. Question or two, or if there's anything you want to say about what you've done so far and what tomorrow is going to bring. Yeah. So now we've got. Um, once I kind of sync up the frantic flippers and the toes, like I, I don't think the toes. <laughs> Um, <laughs> are gonna be good in this iteration. So maybe I'll do another iteration tonight. And then tomorrow morning, or tomorrow at the beginning of the stream, I'll um, export this guy as another video the way I did with the other mermaid. And then I'll put them together in the same frame. And we'll hash out a background. They'll finally get to meet. They'll finally get to meet, <laughs> uh, be in the same context. And then I'll show you how to use the video timeline to you know, do some any, any extra embellishments. Um, yeah, so tune in to see how that goes. Do we have an idea as to what the setting's gonna be yet? It's like a tea party table. Right? Yeah, I think I think we should uh, we should throw a table in there, maybe some snacks. I think mm -hmm. crab cakes is the only idea I've got going for <laughs> this this crowd seems to be really good at puns. So yeah, there's get... any food, <laughs> food ideas? Puns? What kind of food would you bring to a fish tea party? It has to have puns. Right? Um, so please come equipped. Yeah, um, throw ideas out immediately in the beginning. Yes. There's like tablecloth pattern. Oh yeah, yeah, we'll, this will be a good old fashioned picnic. <laughs> All right, so let's have some toes on there. I just uh, skipped the onion skinning and redrew the toes. <laughs> um, so let's see how they turn out. Oh boy, human sushi. Oh gosh, oh, <laughs> mm, mm. Or sandwiches. <laughs> Krabby Sandwiches patty, is, is pretty fun. Which gets into the SpongeBob territory. Fish yeah, tails. let's maybe not violate any copyrights, no. but that I like where your head. I mean, you can do a at. burger and no one's gonna know. <laughs> Granted, fish were just eating burgers. Huh? Like in SpongeBob, they're just eating like cow burger. Unless they. I don't think that cartoons are really a great is. place to dig in deep <laughs> to the logic of. <laughs> it does live in a pineapple. <laughs> so let's see. There's a little bit of a jump. I think I repeated a frame. Um, Look at those toes. Look at those toes. You can end the day with like a wiggle, little toe wiggle. surprise <laughs> as a preview. Da, da, da. It's gonna apply all the types of like casual background music to this. <laughs> is there music going to this for you guys? I think there is. I think when I was watching earlier, there was like a little bit of music going on. We can't hear it. We just have to supply our own music. Oh, well, Yeah. I always have music going in my head. Um, as long as it's not voices. <laughs> uh, I think there's a, oh, there it is. I found it. I found it. Um, All right, do a quick play. Wee! Nice. Awesome. So there he goes. His toes are kind of going. His flim, his flim And more of this going. tomorrow. Yeah. All right, guys. Thanks Thank so, so much, much for, for joining watching. today. Stick around and keep watching some awesome streams. Drummer Maids. By Dai Chi.